Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, You love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexcusable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I lift my hand to praise my Lord. I raise it for a king. The praise I give is meant for him, for he's my everything. I'll praise him in the morning until the sun has set. This Jesus gave his life for me, and this I can't forget. His love is so amazing. I love him all my days, and that is why I lift my hand. He's worthy of my praise. I wonder what you feel. I wonder what you think. Are your thoughts on God or do they wander in the world? It may be your thoughts are somewhere else already this day. Yet, what are we promised? It says here, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. And these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour. Do you have this morning this hope? I hope you have the, the hope of God in your life. And because of that you have the joy of knowing him. The joy of knowing him. The world doesn't. It's in darkness. But you do. You have that joy. You have that hope. You know where you're going when your days are gone. But while you're upon this earth, you have faith that can move mountains if you so desire. And as Peter writes here, that's worth more than all the gold in the world, which perishes even though by refined by fire. And if we have that joy and that hope, then we can raise praise and glory and honour to God. Do you have these things in your life today? It's wonderful to see Leighton smiling there when he turned around and said about his new great-grandson. It's fantastic, isn't it? That life, how it changes us, gives us that smile which spreads as infectious. In New Testament times, because of the blessings from God, that the Christians experienced. The children of God devoted themselves to the one who loved them. The same one who this day has given you new birth. And because of this, I wonder if then you're able to praise him and give him the glory and honour for being chosen. I wonder if you realise that. You have been chosen. You are selected and he loves you. He loves you. Are your thoughts on these higher things? Or do you prefer to wallow in the dirt and muck of this world like so many others do? Do you understand and do you perceive that what this Bible reading is telling you? Or is it a mystery? Have you joy in your life? Or are you forever trapped in a cloud which is gloomy? Which means you have no hope and joy, but Christ desires to give you hope and faith and joy in your existence. This day you're excited because you're here. You wonder what God is going to say to you, how he's going to inspire you, how he's going to reveal himself to you and through his word and what it contains. Excuse me a second.
I don't know about you, but I love church. Not perhaps the building so much, because all sorts of different buildings. It's wonderful, the building that you've got here. But it's about the people and, and it contains. And when we meet, the presence of God comes amongst us as we are gathered. And on Sunday, I get excited. I mean, they give me a key because I come early. Haven't you? So, um, I, but I get excited. That I've come here to be amongst you. Because you never know what God's going to do what, or what you're going to hear during the service or as we gathered and as we're talking amongst each other. It's so excited about the stories that we might be told and heard. Our lives with the Creator should never be a hit and miss affair, should never be dull, but rather to hear about the great things that He has done. I'll give you an example uh, last night about God working. He work, was working in my life. I don't know if you're aware, but I've got something called AF, arterial fibrillation, and I had an occurrence last night. And generally, they last 12 hours. The average is 12 hours. And it started at 10, so it shouldn't have finished until 10 this morning. But I said to the Lord, Lord, you know I've got to go to Ebber Bridge this morning. I need that energy, because if you have AF, it, it takes all your breath away, all your energy away. And it finished at six o'clock this morning, which means I could get all ready and prepared and to come amongst you and be here early. It goes to go, God desires so much to be in our life if we cry out to him and say, Lord, come and minister to me. He doesn't, he doesn't turn a deaf ear to us. And if you read anything of the New Testament, you see those who followed Jesus had a great deal of love and joy within their lives, even though that they were persecuted. So much was taken from them. But I wonder how much love, his love and joy is in your life right now. Are you really living the life that you could do? As you see and perhaps examine the lives that have gone in the past. How much fun and excitement are you, is available to you because you know God. And because of that and because of your life and as people look at you and see what you're about and available to, they just want to be just like you. Troubles, we can live so much like the world. I don't know if I've told you this story. I apologise if I've told you this in the past. Uh, when my mum was growing up, um, she lost a mum and a dad and was looked after by a... Uh, mum's second husband who she forced into marriage to and uh, that we spent that she was encamped uh, this man used to abuse the housekeeper used to come into the house and this was all available and all the kids used to see it and of course my mum she always described uh, this that all she had was daps with carpet in the bottom and one brownies dress she was never washed or looked after, so that means she smelt. And it was Christmas one time, um, and she went along to the local church because they were having a party. But they wouldn't let her in because she smelt. And she looked through the window, and she could see all the kids having fun in sandwiches, this, that, and the other. This was in the um, early 30s. And she always used to say to me, she never stopped us coming to church or anything. She said, call the, them, they call themselves Christians. And that's how the world can perceive us, can't we? How welcoming we are. How open are we? Are we willing to tell people about Christ and then bless people because of that? Even if they perhaps smelled. The Christians of the New Testament had on occasion experienced experienced persecution. Some lost their lives. Others were beaten. Some ended up in prison. Too many were fed to wild beasts or burned alive. But through it all, they loved their life in Christ. They understood that they had, had been saved and they attained fulfillment and had a new life through the, the society in which they live. And the society in which they live wanted to destroy them because they couldn't understand their joy. They couldn't understand their faith and they couldn't understand how they could walk through times of persecution and trials and tribulations. 
Those Christians had become safe and secure in Christ. This is why they could do what they do. They no longer had this God-shaped hole in their lives and they were trying to fill it with everything in the world. They had found what they needed. They were no longer lost, afraid, lonely and unfulfilled. The people in the world believe that a great deal of money, a new spouse or a different job or a powerful car, then their lives would be so much happier. While these things help in reality, what happens is that they spend the money, they end up being divorced, they lose their jobs, and their car rusts and decays. Which means the worldly happiness soon disappears. All these new and exciting things that the world can offer us, does it really fulfil our lives? It can for a while, perhaps, but it can never get to the root cause of the real need which is inside of us, which is God filling our lives via the Holy Spirit. He brings into our lives joy by accepting him. And we experience the banishment of fear because the world fears death and we do not. For death is to gain And God desires to fill us with joy and peace and happiness, no matter what the world throws at us. The good and the bad, the new spouse, the car, which has been broken down again. It says right at the beginning of our reading, praise be to the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder what praise that you raise to God this morning. I wonder what is upon your lips Praise and worship are concepts which the church find difficult and get hard about. I you really believe it's tradition, like some of the traditional songs we've sung this morning. Some say it's modern. Many understand perhaps it's a mixture. All fail because they do not understand this. We are to bring pleasure to God. And if our praise f- from ourselves, through the Holy Spirit, is just purely habit or what we enjoy, then we're missing at the very point. And the person that we're directing our praise and worship to won't enjoy our company. Praise and worship, while it can be about songs and music and hymns, its real source is pleasure, is having the Holy Spirit inside of you who desires to lift you up to bring pleasure to God so that pleasure then not only is in your life because you're enjoying what you're doing but also God is saying wow look at my children it says in God's word the spirit testifies to our own spirit so we can know God we understand that we can feel his presence and assurance and know who and what God is and what he has done and is doing for us Without this testimony, we'll be forever wandering, trying, and our worship potential will never be fulfilled and achieved. If you do not have that spirit inside of you, how can you worship? Without him, then you'll always experience a second-hand experience. And the process will bring little or no pleasure to yourself and especially to God. For he desires you to enjoy your life for the experiences that you receive. And he will walk with you through the times of darkness and the times of joy. As Christians, we should know what Christ has done for us. For as we accepting as our Lord, Master and Saviour, how can we fear? For we have the privilege of being in the position of a child of God. We have the freedom of heaven in our hearts. For have we not found our home? We are told by God that we have an inheritance in heaven which is incorruptible. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. This inheritance means that we are the sons and daughters of him who reigns on high forever. We could have hallelujahs and amen at this point, couldn't we? Because you are God's children, adopted heirs. Your future is safe. You are secure. You know, there's so much uncertainty in the world. 
And many have unsure and insecure futures. This world does not know if it will get the right amount of rain because of our climate is changing. We don't know if our home will be standing when we return to it. So much is changing in the world that we don't know if anything will ever remain the same. So much is unknown and so much is in changing and so much is insecure. Yet our God is unchanging. And that doesn't mean he doesn't understand your changing needs. This does not mean he is unresponsive to your environment in which you live. Our God is relevant as he has ever been and is right there alongside of us, willing to be part of our lives, death, and into eternity, if we want it to be. To achieve this requires simple faith in a saviour who is to our Lord and Master. As Christians, we all suffer sometimes. We all go through trials and tribulations. We have trouble. But Christ makes these times bearable for us. Through our trials, we become capable because of these times of suffering. And we become stronger and have a testimony to tell others because of that. I gave my testimony this morning. Look what God did for me this morning. I praise him and thank him for that. Because of our testimony, we can encourage others. If he, if he can do those things for me, what can he do for you? And then we can say and bring glory to God, look what God has done. This is what our God can do if we just have faith in him. And if he becomes our Lord and Master. What do you want in your life? What do you want as your inheritance? Do you want to be secure and have joy and life? So we're no longer alone. We're no longer afraid. We're no longer anxious of what the future might bring into our lives. If we choose to be closer to God, then all these things are possible. If you know and understand and what he has done, then praise him. If you have faith, then praise him. If you have a new life because of him, then praise him. If he's your Lord, Saviour and Master, then praise him. If he has selected you, he has chosen you, then let the joy flow into your life because of these things. And praise him. You have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith. The salvation of your soul. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your people and ask that you would bless them. Dear Lord, we have communion, a meal that you have instigated for us, before us. And dear Lord, we would ask that you would change our lives so we would know your joy. Know your blessing. And know your power in our lives.